I'll save you from the long definition, but in short, I think this is what it's all about. The architecture of a website makes the information uh, findable and uh, understandable, which I think is important as well. So, about finding and management, managing. Um, findability is, is critical success factor overall for usability, because if, if users can't find what they need uh, through a combination of browsing, searching, and asking, um, well, the system actually fails. Um, but you also um, um, need to think of organizations and people that manage the information. That's an important aspect as well. I was going to treat you to a nice video of uh, this library um, um, where the two Ronnies, um, famous old British couple, maybe the English people know it, um, they're in a library where the books are sorted by color. And um, <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's going to show that um, that's not really working for everyone. I'll get back to that later. Um, what I really liked about the book um, that I mentioned earlier, um, they give this example of iTunes and uh, they share a story about um, two people working on um, a building. And the story has this metaphor of this a minister passing by and he looks at these two guys who are laying bricks. And he asks them, like, first person, like, what are you doing? And the guy said, well, I'm laying bricks, uh, obviously. And he asked the second person, and he says, well, what are you doing? And he says, well, I'm building a cathedral. And the minister is really impressed with the answer of the second guy, and he keeps on thinking about it. And he decides to go back to the building site the next day um, to ask more about this guy who was, who was building this cathedral. And he's gone. And there's only the one guy who was laying bricks, he was there. And he said, well, well where's your colleague? I, I want to ask him some more questions about the cathedral building. And he said, yeah, that fool, he got fired um, because he thought he was building a cathedral, but we're building a garage, actually. And that's what you should think about before you start designing a website. Uh, are you building a garage or are you building a cathedral? Or are you just laying bricks? iTunes, they mention in the book, is a good example of a garage that turned out as a cathedral in the end. Um, first, it was a management system for just your local music. Then you could buy music. Then you could get podcasts, you get videos, whatever. But the original architecture of iTunes wasn't really made for all these functionalities. And as well, when you look at um, iTunes on your phone, well, no music in iTunes there. Then you've got this app called Music, and uh, you've got this app called uh, iPod, or uh, uh, um, Podcast. So it's all in, in different sections, and there's not really an overall experience that um, uh, gives you the same experience with iTunes on your computer or on your phone. So um, that's what's called system thinking. Um, think about... Um, your website as a part of a system and give people the same experience on all platforms that you use it um, in real life or online. So next section is why it's important. Um, small joke there. Um, I first had information gap, but I was at the tube and I saw mind the gap and I thought, oh, I can use that. Um, why is it important? Well, we suffer from information overload. That's not a new thing. It's been a problem of centuries. People were complaining about too many books, like ages ago. And actually the, the phrase information overload was, was popularized by this guy, Alvin Toffler in 1970, before I was born, in a book called Future Shock. Um, but it, it's really become a bigger problem. Um, the growth of information is, is sped up by the introduction of computers and the internet as well. And, and you can imagine that the findability techniques from the end of the 20th century are not really effective today. Um, so when you look at information architecture, it actually covers three sections that are in this diagram. And uh, that's context, content, and users. And uh, when you make decisions on information architecture, they will help you uh, ask the right questions to your clients. Um, the first thing to start with is the context. Without context, um, it doesn't really have meaning to, to design a website. 
Um, so, um, whether explicit or implicit, um, each organization has mission, goals, strategy, staff, uh, processes and procedures. They also have um, physical and a technologi uh, technolo technology infrastructure, a budget and culture. Um, so this mix of capabilities is, is unique to each organization. So that's why you have to look into the context every time. And the key to success is alignment, like I said before. And websites really should reflect the organization um, because you don't want your website to look like a competitor, do you? <clears throat> the second part, um, there's no website or information architecture without content. And when you look at context, content from uh, the information architecture's perspective, think about these six things. The ownerships, who creates and owns the content, and don't forget the management of the content. The format, what types of documents will there be? The structure, and, and think about some structural markup. Um, like XML to, to exchange with other databases. Um, the metadata is for very important for structuring. Um, and to what extent um, will it describe the content in your system and what's already there? The volume of the content as well. Um, think about growth. Is, is the information that's there now, will it still be there in a few years' time or will it be a lot more? And uh, at last, how dynamic is the content? Uh, will it grow old very quickly? Or um, you, you think about um, the, 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 the age of the content as well, when you think about dynamism. Um, this um, is actually what I was thinking about when I was thinking about information architecture. And as well, what people who design websites, I find myself guilty of that as well, you think you know it better than your users do, or you don't. And does anyone know what, what these paths are called in English? Design lines. Design lines. The Dutch have a far better word for that. <laughs> anyone know the Dutch term? Elephant lanes. Maybe the Dutch think they're elephants. I don't know why, where it comes from. There's a great book with all these pictures of elephant lanes, um, but it, it really pictures that the designer thought a different thing than what the users would do. And maybe elephants are smarter, taking the shorter route, or I don't know, they're heavy to sort of make the hole in the, in the grass. Uh, but remember, when you design, uh, you're not your user. And uh, Chris Pembreed was talking about that this morning as well. He was talking about hippos, and um, well, I've, I've m mentioned in my introduction of this talk the iter method. I think this is right. Well, don't think. Well, not in this stage. What you think looks nice is a better option. The user might think different. We're speeding through. Information systems. Um, I wanted to look at a more systematic approach on user experience and, and design uh, from, from what systems there are and you can use to, to organize your information or your content. Um, I can't go into it really deep, the, the book does, but I'll, I'll try and talk into some um, main aspects of information architecture when it concerns information systems. And first, I want to show you two forms of information architecture. And I've used uh, the WordCamp London website as an example um, for top-down information architecture. And when you approach it from here, it usually answers questions um, people that visit the website uh, have. Like, where am I? Um, when you look at the website, it makes it clear. Um, how do I get around the site? What's available? Uh, how can I uh, contact a real person? Um, how can I engage on other digital channels? Um, well, there's a, there's a clear Twitter um, feed on it, so you know. <coughs> um, WordCamp London is on Twitter. So the, these questions are answered by using top-down information architecture. Another form of information architecture is bottom-up. 
And um, recipe collections are quite a good example of that. It's nothing but information architecture there. You, you see the clear chunks of uh, the recipe, uh, the ingredient index, the method. That, that's all information architecture. You, it structures a recipe. And um, the photo app on uh, iPads are a good example of that as well. Because um, I took a screenshot of my, um, my own iPad. And you can tell like, that it's sorted by date or uh, geolocation. You know where I've been on a holiday last year. Um, but from there, you can sort of like wander through. And it actually sort of calls on questions, bottom-up information architecture. So that's a different approach. Information systems consist of um, four components. And um, the organization systems is the first one. And there's a few challenges there. Um, Alice still will do this workshop on tone of voice, voice later on. And um, it's, a, it's a great deal on information architecture as well. And let me pronounce this right. Ambiguity. <laughs> Difficult word for me. Um, Classification systems are made of language, and language is ambiguous. And you can have so many different meanings for one word. So um, to, to conquer this challenge, make, make sure the context is clear for people in which you use um, these words. Difference in perspective. Um, I already told you about the um, two Ronnie's library, sorted by color. There are people that sort their books by color. Anyone does that in here? Sorry, that's not... My boyfriend does. It looks nice, though, but whenever I want to read a book that's in his bookcase, I always have to ask him, what color is it? And he will go like, red. And his red section is a bit bigger than this. It's not his bookcase, but... It looks like it. It looks nice, though. Um, what you think about when you organize content, think about difference in perspective, because what might seem logic to you may not to another. And um, labeling and organization systems are intensely affected by the creator's perspective. Um, internal politics, that's a challenge as well. And um, there's always a tone of voice or the way people want to uh, be seen by other um, organizations or users. Um, I, I was talking to a client and they did telephone services. And um, she didn't call herself a, a call center because that was something different to her. But not to me. I, I think if you answer phone calls or call to people, you're a call center. But that's like within their own... Uh, branch that's something different. So think about these things, how it uh, affects your users. Another part is organization schemes. Um, I'll, I'll go through a few examples of this as well. Um, a very simple one is exact organization schemes, also known as known item search. That really works for directories. Like if you know you're looking for someone's name, you just type it in and whoop, there's the result. That rarely happens. Um, not everyone knows what they're looking for. So here we go with my uh, ambiguous organization schemes. And I've um, looked at two English websites of museums to show um, what types you have. And we can distinguish three types, topical, task-oriented and audience-specific. And here's uh, Tate's website. Um, let's see if it works, yes. Um, art and artist is definitely topic-based. Um, plan your visit is task. They want you to do something. Book now, task as well. And become a member, task as well. And this is, is quite a simple, simple navigation. Um, you can't get confused easily. Museum of National History, also um, tasks like visit, discover, they want you to do something. But here we have another one, schools, and that's uh, audience-based. And still, this is a small navigation here, but I, I 
find this very confusing within like this navigation there. So make it clear for people um, when you use hybrid schemes like these are used. It's never single topic navigation or um, audience based. Make sure if if you mix it, do it right because uh, people want to make a mental map of where they are and um, they get confused when you mix it up too much. I have to rush a bit. Um, labeling is one part um, of uh, information systems as well. And actually, without knowing it, everyone who makes websites makes labels. They convey meaning without taking up too much space. Um, you have to know what's behind the door. And um, websites aren't always um, as transparent as these boxes of herbs. Um, so, um, to minimize disconnect, you must try and do your best uh, to design labels that speak the same language as the environment the users uh, uh, are in, uh, ref well, reflecting its content. So, when we talk about labels, there are different varieties. Uh, Crispin Reed uh, mentioned contextual links this morning already, and they are actually in your text. You you uh, navigate through contextual links uh, that are in blog texts. Headings are a very important part of the information structure. You know where you are in different sections. Already talked to navigation labels earlier on with the websites. Index terms can be a good way of structuring a website. And there's iconic labels very often used on small devices uh, to save up space, like on phones. But on websites, the old one is the house for a home or the burger menu. They're iconic labels. But labels can be ambiguous, like I said before. Um, general guidelines to uh, make it more clear is narrow down your scope make it uh, understandable for people, reduce their perspective, and um, keep content, user, and context simple and focused. If, if you're designing a website for a large group or different groups, it's very hard to, to stay focused. And um, develop consistent labeling systems. Um, think about the labels that aren't necessary now, but maybe in the future, so you, you'll have space for them to add. And think about style, presentation, the syntax. Don't use noun or verb-based throughout each other, but choose. Um, and, and think about comprehensiveness and what your audience would like to see. Navigation systems. Um, yeah, they're actually one of the, the most important parts on websites of bringing structure. Um, like the global menu is always there, so you need to pay attention to that. And navigation is, is really important because uh, it prevents us from getting lost. The, the signage here at the conference is pretty good. You always look for where to go and, and think about it that way when you design your navigation on your website. Um, there's three types, global, local, and contextual. Um, the global menu is, of course, the global navigation on your website. Local are usually uh, sub-navigations, and contextual is like contextual links in your website. When we go on to navigation, um, we actually um, end up in a gray area. And um, you see uh, information architecture right here, uh, under one big umbrella with uh, different aspects of um, user experience design, because it's you can look at it from so many perspectives. Um, doing uh, interaction design or visual design is, is a very different um, knowledge area than information architecture. If you want to test your navigation, um, look it up on the internet. There's the navigation stress test by Keith Instone. And what you actually do is go to a website, ignore the home page, um, and just pick a random page, figure out where you are, and um, get rid of the URL, and then think out where you should go next. And if you end up on the page that's logic from the navigation, you've done the right job. But most of the times you won't, unfortunately. Um, other parts of navigation you can think of is supplemental, like sitemaps or indexes. 
but uh, guides as well. When you do a checkout process, for instance, on a web shop like WooCommerce, you get all these steps that guide you through the process so you know where you are. It gives you context. At last, don't let navigation drown the content. Um, sometimes websites are so full of links and navigation that uh, it really distracts from the actual content. Another important part of information systems are search systems. Um, that's a talk on its own, so I'll leave that for now. But there is a big question you should ask yourself uh, when you implement a search system on your website. Does it need search? Or maybe it's just a solution to poor navigation. I know on my computer I use this global search a lot. You can imagine what kind of mess it is. It's not very well organized. So. Um, basically, when, when you need search, it's when you have lots of information or fragmented websites um, that consist of different subsites. Well, the last part, um, how do you do good information architecture? I have no answer to that. I'm sorry if I disappoint you here. Um, like I said before, the context is really important and every time you work with a new client, there's a new business context. Um, so there's no one way of dealing with it. Um, there is a small process that you can follow to have like um, a way of structuring your information architecture. Always start with research. Um, most clients find this a really boring moment in designing websites. And they ask you questions like, when are we going to start the real work? Um, that they mean graphical design by that, because that's more visual and appealing. And this is all like very abstract to people. But when you do research, it doesn't have to be really extensive. Even for smaller projects, it's, it's interesting to um, look at um, a research and, and look at existing uh, materials that are there already. Um, think about a current website. Most of the time we don't have to build from scratch, so look at the content that's already there. Uh, most clients tend to think that's rubbish and they want it all new, but there's probably stuff you can reuse. Um, after that, um, you have to move on to a decent strategy. and. Um, the research provides a contextual understanding that forms the foundation for development of the information architecture strategy. Let me see, just skip this for the time. Um, here's the three circles again. And uh, when you do research, well, you, you work with the, these three circles as well. And um, well, the process I, I showed before looks really clean, but in the real world, the, the process is far more messy, especially with smaller projects. And when time and money are on a tight budget, um, you have to make choices about what to include. Good research means asking the right questions, and these circles will help you do so. Starting with the context. Put some rugby in there for Six Nation lovers. This guy knows where he's going. He has a clear goal. So I really believe in business context as a starting point. And not knowing what the strategy of the organization is is just as dangerous as ignoring your users. So at least find, about, uh, find out about a mission, vision, and business goals. The content, actually the stuff inside your information environment, Users need to be able to find content before they can use it. So findability precedes usability. So stand, spend some time on studying objects and look at existing information architecture. You can do content analysis, um, look at structural metadata, descriptive metadata, administrative metadata. And um, Crispin Reed was, was doing object-oriented UX. Um, what is the object? How can you describe it? What distinguishes it from others? Think about these things. And how can you make the object findable for people and machines? Because SEO is uh, really helped by good information architecture. So I told you, information architecture isn't very sexy. 
this actually is information architecture. <laughs> Um, so there's no wireframes or uh, prototyping involved. You just make lists of content and uh, create um, the, the relationships and where it should be positioned in your website. So I can imagine clients can't really deal with this. How is it going to look? <laughs> Not there yet. <laughs> So eventually, uh, the users are the ultimate judges of your information environments. You don't want them to do this when they look at your website, do you? So when you do research, um, do users analysis. Um, look at the content performance, visitor information, or search log analysis. And I've recently been installing um, relevancy plugin for a few websites that gives you real good insights on the search people do on your website if you have a search function. Um, so um, find out about um, information projects that are already there. Another um, good method is card sorting and um, there's, uh, you can do it by hand, but there's this website called Optimal Sort, optimalworkshop.com. And they've got really good explanation on how it works. It's free, up to 30 items you can uh, put in there and invite people by email, like doing card sorting tests. And what you actually ask them is to, to group information, help you build the structure and see, you can get all nice analysis from that and sort out uh, if, if what you thought was right, the user thinks that as well. Resistance. Um, there was a question this morning uh, with the other user experience uh, talk. Um, if your client doesn't want to work with you on the project, how do you deal with that? And uh, the good answer was uh, <laughs> fire the client. I think that's a good one. Mm. Common arguments for, for extensive research and di really digging into information architecture can be that they don't have time of mo or money to do so. They already know what they want. I mean, clients know what they want and they've already done their own research but you'll be likely to convince them that they can save time and money by doing research and um, if you have this all sorted out the, the process of uh, design will be uh, more easy and shorter because you don't get discussions on what should be where and what relations you should include Another thing is that managers don't know what the users want. Um, I think this is right. Um, so involve them in, in user testing, like card sorting. Let them do the card sorting method as well. I really like doing research. Um, like I said, I did my thesis last year and I, I couldn't stop doing desk research. But at some point you have to get it together and, and make your story and uh, make a strategy. So, uh, because the more you learn, the more questions you, ha you have. So, um, but usually as designers, web designers, we don't have the luxury to, to do extensive research. Um, so uh, make sure you turn it into a strategy and, and um, um, bring that to your client as soon as possible. Another question arises there is, because how can you develop an information architecture strategy when your client doesn't have a business strategy? Or how can you develop information architecture strategy when there's no content in place? Business strategies, content collections and information architectures don't exist in a vacuum. They co-evolve in a highly interactive matter, manner and one cannot do without the other. Um, but developing an information architecture strategy, it can help expose gaps in business strategy and content collections. So it will give back feedback information to clients. And the process of making a strategy will force people to make difficult choices they've managed to avoid up until doing it. Um, I'm running over time a bit, don't I? Am I still? Okay. <laughs> um, when you develop a strategy, there's um, four parts you should consider thinking about. First thing after research is think. Create some time to think over what you've learned and digesting all the information you got on your strategy. Good thing about thinking is you can do it anywhere. So pick a nice spot to do your thinking, like sunny terrace or a good park. 
Next thing is articulate. Um, draw down, make mind maps to, to uh, write down your findings. And after that, communicate it with your client in an early stage so they can give you feedback on what you've discovered thus far. And the last part is testing, testing, one, two. Even running an informal test with one friend is better than not testing at all. So testing is within reach for small projects as well. After you've done your strategy, you need a plan to um, move your findings onto the people who are actually going to do the design. And um, so you write a project plan. It will force the, the team to, to ask the questions and it's actually the bridge between the strategy and the design. So after this, you'll be going to the designing part and that's not part of my talk, so I won't cover that. But that's when you go to the actual site mapping, wireframes, navigation systems and prototyping. So wrapping up, um, I hope I've given you some understanding on what information architecture is, why I think it's important and the components that you stumble upon to when you design information systems. Bit short, but how to do some research and strategy. Um, how you maybe can convince your client. This, this is a part you should cover. And um, that was the end of my talk, so thank you. Maybe there are questions that I can hopefully answer. You have a question. Oh. Where do we find your slides? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can upload them. That'd be great. That's okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, my own website is uh, currently undergoing construction. <laughs> it's very hard to do your own information architecture. I can tell you that. Uh, but I'll post the link to the slides on Twitter. Is that good? This, or you can email me at, if you want some more information on the subject. And, um, but uh, I'll put it on Twitter. I'll put a link there. At Boo Media. So leave this out and leave that out. <laughs> okay. Question? Sorry. Yeah. Hi. Thank you for your talk. That was, uh, I found that really very interesting. Um, I'd like to know, how do you deal with clients who are so hooked on what they think is the latest method of presenting their website and navigation, um, but maybe you know that that's not going to work in the way that it should work. So you're talking about design fashion trends, stuff like that. Okay. Um, it depends. <laughs> That's always a good answer to give. Now, it depends. Um, as, as I said before, I'm, a, I'm really um, uh, hanging on to strategy, business strategy. So if that trend doesn't fit their users or clients, um, don't do it. Um, I mean, always follow your goals for your business. Uh, so I, I convince them not to do, like search. Um, they say every, every website needs search. Well, maybe not all of them. So, and and if, if they do want it, well, at least consider why they want to. It, don't do it because it's a trend. Uh, I mean, do it because you think it's useful for your website. I think just, just make people ask the questions themselves. So, is that a good answer to your question? <laughs> Yeah, I was just wondering, when you're looking deeper into taxonomies, um, identifying the culture, the language of your audience, it's quite tricky to, to, to dig into that. Have you got any tips for that? Digging into the language of the audience? Yeah, your target audience, they have the individual language. Um, when, when you search for certain words, you build your taxonomies. 
Okay. Um, well, um, where will you start for taxonomies? It depends on your clientele. There's excellent, like, if you do a medical website, there's uh, a thesauri for that. So you could use those. Um, most of us are not designing websites for really, really new businesses that are unique to, you know, whatever. So all, looking at uh, competitors' websites or do research on social media on subjects that are there, um, you can see what they use uh, and, and what the users use. As an, as an example, you would develop a site um, for Generation Z. Mm -hmm. They have their own language. Yes, I'm not very good with children, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's true, I think it's a... Sp I do marketing, but I, I don't really do marketing for younger people because, I'm sorry, I don't speak their language. So, maybe get someone involved who does. Um, use younger people, maybe. Uh, testing as well. And, and um, what you can do with card sorting as well is you can do open card sorting and don't present them with uh, uh, terms and titles, but let them fill it in and see if you can see a structure on the words they use. So maybe that's a good one. Question? A question. Yeah. Hi, um, I just had a really quick question about other recommended reading. There's the IA for the web book. Is there anything else you'd recommend? Uh, yeah, I've got quite a few books actually, and um, but I, I was gonna sort of, I thought I had more time before doing this talk, but actually up until Wednesday I was working until 1.30 in the morning to finish it. Uh, I wanted to do a sheet with resources, but um, um, I, I can email you, if you email me or send me a message on Twitter, I can give you some resources, yeah? Thank you.